Welcome to Highline BI 348 class video number 66. Hey, if you want to download this file, BI 348 chapter 11 video 66 and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, this is the third video in chapter 11 all about Monte Carlo simulation. Now, in video number one, we had an introduction to Monte Carlo simulation. Last video, we talked about randomizing different variables. And here's our comprehensive problem. Here's the description. I'm just going to scroll down here and show you the bits I've already entered into the spreadsheet. Of course, rule number one for simulation is we follow our good spreadsheet model guidelines. We have formula inputs here, our model down here. Here's our company, Bay Air Services. That's a co compressor company down in Richmond, California. They make compressors. And they're interested in investigating through simulation to learn about the probability of a loss for a new product. Now, really, they want to see if the new product is profitable, if the probability is too high for a simulated loss then we'll have to consider and make a decision about whether we want to try and manufacture this new compressor. Now, we have some set static variables and some random variables. Our set static variables, these are the variables we're going to assume that won't change through our simulation. Selling price per unit, that will be P, 199 bucks. We're going to try to compete directly with those blue M-Glow compressors that you see like at Home Depot. Hey, our total administrative and advertising cost, TAC, that'll be $850,000. Our random variables are uncertain variables. We're going to have direct labor cost per unit. That will be DLC. It's a discrete variable. Our distribution that we base our randomizing on is a historical relative frequency distribution. There it is. Direct labor cost per unit. From past data, we've estimated those are the discrete amounts, and here are the probabilities. We actually saw this exact distribution in an example last video. Our second variable, material cost per unit, MC. It's a continuous variable using the uniform distribution. There's our min, and there's our max value. Our third random variable is demand. That's D. Continuous variable based on the normal probability distribution. Our mean is 17,500, and the standard deviation is 5,000. There's our math formula, demand times, and we're going to take the price per unit minus direct labor cost per unit minus material cost per unit. And then once we get that total from our multiplication, we'll subtract the total fixed costs, or our total administrative and advertising costs. Now, one thing we can do in this type of analysis, we don't have to run a simulation. Notice for each one of our uncertain variables, we have best, base, and worst case scenario. Now, notice for a cost, the best scenario is the lowest cost. The worst is the highest. Same for this material cost per unit. The lowest is the best. The highest is the worst. For our demand, the best is going to be the highest number of units, the base, and then, of course, the worst will be the lowest number of units. Notice we have to assume demand can't go below 0. So actually, we could come down here in our model area. And all I did was create a formula for the best, the base, and the worst. Now, we can clearly see that, well, there's potentially a loss of 850,000. And of course, that's when demand is 0. So it's all of our fixed costs up here. The base case is about a profit of 322,000. And wow, that would be awesome. The best case, $1.9 million of profit. Now, the problem with this kind of analysis, yes, we see these three values, but we really don't know what the probability of each of these is. $850,000 is a lot to lose. But if the probability is very small, then perhaps we want to, as a decision, take on this project. So that's where simulation comes in. Now we're going to start with our direct labor cost, this variable right here. And here's our probability distribution. Just as we did last video, when we get to our randomizing formulas, we have to have a lookup table. And we have to create the first column with the cumulative probabilities. 
So we're always starting off with 0. That's the lowest probability. And for approximate match lookup, that's what you need as your first value. And then the subsequent values, if we're doing cumulative, I'm going to say, hey, give me the sum of the very first one, colon, close parentheses, and then I'm going to lock this variable right here, F4. That's an expandable range. Control Enter. And I'm going to copy it down. You can go to any particular cell and see, sure enough, it is expanding. So we get our cumulative total. Now, we can use the RAND function, which randomly generates a probability between 0 and 1. Use that as our lookup value. Look it up here using approximate match and retrieve a direct labor cost randomly. Now, last video, we talked about the details setting lookup and the other various randomizing formulas we're going to use. So this should be a slight review. All right, so I added some formatting there. Now we want to come down here. I'm going to scroll down. We can see all of our details for our variables up here. We have our lookup table. Here's our model area. Now we're going to start off with simulation of 1, but we actually want to do it 10,000 times. So I'm going to point to the fill handle. And when I see my crosshair, I'm going to right click, drag down, and then back, let go, and a secret pop-up menu pops up. And I say Series. I'm going to make sure and say this series must fill down the column. The step value is 1, and I want to end at 10,000. So I type 10,000 in as soon as I click OK, 1 to 10,000. Control down arrow, control up arrow. Now we need to create one, two, three randomizing variables and then build our final profit formula. That's our profit formula right there. So you ready? Scroll down a little bit here. Equals, and we're using lookup function to do approximate match lookup. And the lookup value is going to be RAND. That generates a number between 0 and 1. We talked all about that in great detail in our last video. The array, first column, second column, copy it down. And lookup is different than VLOOKUP. It doesn't need to know the column number for that array because it will always take the value from the last column. Close parentheses, tab. So there's my randomizing variable for direct label cost. If I hit F9, you can see it's randomly selecting, according to these probabilities, our direct labor cost. Material cost per unit, we're going to assume that this is a uniform distribution. So we simply have to use RAND between. Now there's a bottom and a top, the min and the max. And if I go to material, this is the min right here. And I'm going to come down here. Right now, that would be 75, and I don't want that. I need pennies, too. So as we saw last video, we multiply this times 100. So really, for RAND, the bottom is 7,500 now, comma. The top, 105, and I need to multiply times 100. So really, it's 1,050, close parentheses. Not quite what I want, because I want to randomize with pennies. So then I divide by 100. And there's our randomizing formula based on a uniform distribution for material cost per unit. If I hit the F9, I have two randomizing variables. Now we go on to demand. And this is a normal distribution with a mean and standard deviation. So I'm going to start with the norm. Dot, dist is for getting a probability, inverse is for getting an actual x value. Our random variable is demand, that's the x. Probability, ran, which will give us between 0 and 1. That's the cumulative probability. Norm inverse needs a cumulative probability there to get an x. Again, last video we saw nice pictures and everything to describe how this works. The mean, there it is comma, the standard deviation, there it is, close parentheses. Now, this is not quite what I want, but let's hit Enter. If I hit F9, you can see it's definitely going to generate, based on the normal distribution and standard deviation of 5,000 and mean of 17,500, the right values. However, RAND is going to give us 15 digits there, and we don't want that, so we want to round this. F2, 
R O U N D to round this, comma, and the number of digits 0 to round to the integer. Control Enter. Now, if we copy this down 10,000 rows, we will get negative values. And demand can't have a negative value in our situation here. So F2, we're going to have to treat this as one value. The other value will be 0. And I will say, please always give me the max of number 1 will be 0, comma, or number 2. So max has a choice. When this comes out negative, max will take 0. When this comes out positive, max will select that one. So there you go. Enter. Now if I hit F9 to randomize, I have my three random variables. Now we can build our final profit formula. Equals the demand times open parentheses, and I need my price. There it is right there, minus direct labor cost per unit, minus material cost per unit, close parentheses, minus, and there's our fixed cost, administrative and advertising. And that's our formula. Now if I hit the F9 key, this is different than all of the examples we've seen in the previous two videos. Now we have one, two, three different variables going into our final formula that are being randomized. F9, F9. Now we want to tell this simulation to repeat 10,000 times. And if we were to put all of the correct cell references locked and all that kind of stuff and copy this down, it would take too long to calculate. So as we learn two videos ago, there's a great way to use the data table feature. Now, the data table requires that there are some formulas in the first row. And then you highlight however many substitute variables you want to substitute into your formula and tell data table, and it will calculate all of them for you. But the trick is, we're going to tell the data table that this is the formula input cell. And this cell doesn't lead to any one of these formulas. So it's a way of tricking the data table to simply copy down these formulas 10,000 times and randomize them each time. And it is a dramatic time saver in terms of formula calculation time. So you ready? I'm going to highlight the first row, Control-Shift-Down arrow, all the way down to 10,000 simulations. Control backspace to jump back to the active cell. Now I go up to data, data tools, what if analysis, data table, or the keyboard Alt DT for data table. There is no row input, column input. Normally, this is the column, right? So these, these items are in a column, and we want those substituted in. But if you click on a cell that doesn't lead back to any one of the actual formulas, then all it does is copy these down blindly without doing any substitution. So when I click OK, there we go. That is simply amazing. Now I'm going to add some formatting. 10,000 rows of simulated values. That's amazing, because now we can take this profit, do some analysis, and see whether we should take on this project. What will our decision be? Right off the bat, let's calculate average. And I'm going to average all the profit numbers, not the one up there, but all the 10,000 below. Control, Shift, Down Arrow, Control, Backspace. And I'm going to click on number one, Control C to copy that. So the average, wow, 324,000. That's not so bad, even if I hit F9 a few times, right? Oh, yeah, so it's pretty, pretty consistent. The count equals count, Control V, that's 10,000. We already know that, equals max. Here's the max possible profit. Probably an extreme value like that is going to be unlikely, but 2 million bucks, that's looking pretty good. The min, 850,000, that's expected to add demand equals zero. The standard deviation, we've got to know something about the variation, and I'm using the sample one, Control V, and Enter. So standard deviation and the mean are almost exactly equal to each other. 
Now, before we even do our frequency distribution, which is always the, the ultimate goal here with this simulation, I'm going to go ahead and calculate the probability of a loss. And I'm going to say criteria range, control V, comma, in parentheses. And I'm going to say loss. Last video we did less than or equal to 0. I'm just going to say less than 0. So 0 is not included in this. Close parentheses. And I'm going to divide it by my count. So the probability of a loss, wow, almost 20%. So if I hit F9, you could see the probability staying pretty close, 18, 19, 20%. But now we want to do our frequency distribution. Here's our range of possible values we could get if we take on this project. Given all of the probability distributions for each one of our variables, there's the range. We want to calculate the frequency. As we saw last video and back in chapter two, you set up frequency function with the upper values for the bins. These are the bins that the frequency function automatically calculates. I'm going to highlight one more cell than I have upper values. In the active cell at the top, I enter the array function frequency data array. That's all the values, control V, comma, Bins, those are the upper limits for each category. Close parentheses, and this is an array function, so I hold Control, Shift, and Enter to enter it simultaneously. I immediately look up to the formula bar. I see my curly brackets, so I know Excel understood it was an array calculation. There it is. I need to also say equals the particular frequency divided by left arrow, Control, Shift, down arrow, F4 to lock it. Control Enter, double click and send it down. And there are all of our probabilities. So the probability of between 500,000 and 250,000 is about 4.4%. Between 750,000 and 500,000, less than 1%, less than 1%. The one we have to worry about is this one right here, which is from 250,000 to 0. So we do have some probabilities we have to mull over and consider what our decision is going to be. But we can see we have some pretty big probabilities without even doing a function to add them all up. I could highlight those and see down here in the status bar it says about 80% probability of having a profit above 0. F9 will give us randomized values. And look at that. It looks pretty, pretty consistent. We could also build a chart and look at the distribution. But right now, these probabilities are helpful for decision making. So in this video, we talked about a simulation model where we had one, two, three randomized or uncertain variables. We built our model, we did our simulation, and we did our analysis to help with decision making. All right, next video, we will see an example of a random binomial variable used in simulation to decide whether a marketing plan is reasonable or not. All right, we'll see you next video.